Hello everyone and welcome back to another Dev Update with me, Pavia Ross, and I'm joined today. He's big, he's back, and he loves a chat. It's Paul Manuel. How are you doing, mate? <laughs> Good. I'm fine, thank you. I love the fact that I never know what you're going to say at the beginning of every podcast. And I love it too. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Lots to talk about today in today's Dev Update. Kick us off. We've seen a couple of updates to the map. Yep. What's going on? What's that all about? Uh, yeah, so just some bits and pieces on the map, not everything, but what we've recently done, some exciting, some just a bit fundamental. So uh, we have um, updated the Pavia map on the website, which is cool. So it's now got a slicker UI. There's Lovely. more to come, but it's a lot nicer to use now. Hopefully people like that. Um, the big update there as well is now <clears throat> connections of wallets is so much easier. So for people, for the OGs will know to connect your wallet was a pretty painful process, sending, sending to Ada, doing all this kind of stuff, whereas that's all gone now. So you can literally just connect your Cardano wallet, no problem at all, one click. So that's done. We've been meaning to do that for a while, but it's out there. So that's brilliant. Um, for those of them who've gone into the wallet connection, for those paying attention, you can also connect your MetaMask wallet. So... Uh, See where that goes. <laughs> lovely, lovely. Um, in all honesty, yeah, it's it's us preparing for um, the future and making sure that we open everybody our arms to everybody from every community. I love it. So you can connect your MetaMask wallet today. It's there. It's out there. It doesn't actually do anything, to be fair. So uh, don't stress about it. But um, the tech's there and it's it's ready to go. And then the last bit is we had this um, fairly janky sort of login process originally, account creation where you had to like log in and you get a one-time password every time you do it. That's all gone. Mm -hmm. Now we're using industry standard or zero tech, which means you can log in with Google, log in with Discord. Ooh, easy. One click. Very soon you'll be able to, we're just waiting on it. We've done the tech. We're just waiting for logging with Twitter, um, which is my favorite. And obviously logging with Discord. And of course, as you already have, log in with your email as standard. Um, for everybody that already has a Pavia account, when you come to log in, you just got to put your email address in as you always did, but just go forgot password and then just go through that process one time and you're in. Yep. So a uh, couple of points on that is the reason it's got traditional email login rather than just connect to wallet as your main login, which is very Web3, of course, is because we want to make sure that we set ourselves up to encourage everybody from Web2 land who might not be crypto native, might just be curious about Pavia, but don't necessarily have wallets and so on. We want them to be able to create an account uh, as well. So that's the reason we have an email login. Maybe we'll do login with wallet in the future, but at the moment you log in and once you're in your account, that's the point you can connect your wallet or multiple wallets if you have them. So if you have multiple Cardano wallets, or if you have MetaMask wallets, you can just add them all to your account. That's nice. how that works. Amazing. Yep. The only watcher gotcha I would say is don't just go, oh, log in with Discord if you're used to logging with your traditional email, because you'll probably just create a new account from scratch. Yeah. And then you've got two running in parallel. Yep. So um I would suggest for the for the OGs just log in as you always did. Amazing. Yep. Some nice updates to the map, but not the last update that we'll see. There's definitely going to be more coming so stay for tuned sure. for that. Yep. Yep. Next on my list we saw a very interesting spacecraft last week. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, launchpad reveal. So that beautiful spacecraft, the Moon Skipper, which is its class, Moon Skipper X is the class of spacecraft, uh, designed by the genius and brilliant Adam, who's our lead designer and um, sci-fi nerd. <laughs> and this is like a passion project in many ways for yes. all of us, but particularly him. Um, so if you haven't seen it yet, please go to YouTube and check out right now uh, check it out. that it's video. It's gorgeous and all credit to the amazing Ross who did the sound design as well. Real team effort. But, um, that is the actual rocket that is going to live on the launch pad. So if you have land next to the launch pad, you have land next to one ginormous rocket. Yes. So I hope. It may get a bit noisy. And it's times. huge, by the way. It's huge. You guys saw the comparison video out on Monday. It's absolutely massive. And this isn't, you know, this isn't kind of a trailer just to make it as, as good. That What you're seeing is what you get. And it's absolutely stunning. It's massive. So in real terms, it's 325 meters long. It's powered by... This is where I need Adam. We, we should do a podcast with Adam, we right? We should. Just to, he can just totally nerd out on this yes. thing. Um, so I'm going to do it a disservice, but it's like got three fusion reactors. He'll be the one to tell you how that turns into 
electrical energy that goes to a Tesla coil that, that <laughs> you know, that creates some time space continuum. I don't know, but yeah, already yeah. I'm butchering it. Yeah. Uh, um, but it's, it, it's a phenomenal, phenomenal piece of design. Um, it's got the capacity to scale for like 1,080 civilian passengers. Wow. And to scale. Like 72 crew, 36 engineers. I mean, Adam's got this all figured out every single space yeah. in that and that's what i love is when you design things like that spaceship mm -hmm. it's not just a simple process of you know just drawing a rocket and then that's it it's done there's a lot of thought and uh you know exploration that goes into these designs yeah. isn't there oh for sure yeah i mean all joking aside i said to adam well, you know, how fast does it go adam I go oh, 47 000 kilometers per hour but that's only when it's like going to the moon and we haven't really got the fusion reactors full of uh, full tail i mean obviously it goes like faster than the speed of light and you know all the explanations are there <laughs> but i mean what's what's joyful about it is you know there's serious passion in this team about things like that and um hey who doesn't want to be part of an nft project that has something that goes to the moon right so exactly there we are so that that's all out there but loads more to come there's a service tower and um there's lots of activity and gamification around what's going on around the launch pad. so and with good. the rocket yeah lots of people on board we're talking people we're talking multiplayer give me a little bit of a of an update on the multiplayer because it's super important going forward and it's something that we're always thinking about yep. where, where are we at with that so um so netcode update <clears throat> with the project at the moment um so i'm going to try not to go all super techy but effectively everybody's played multiplayer games everybody's mm -hmm. been playing them for years and you'd have seen all the different flavors of multiplayer games but under the hood is what we in the industry refer to as netcode which is literally a dark art but it's effectively how you give the illu sometimes the the illusion right. of real-time multiplayer going yeah. on and considering how big multiplayer is people might be surprised that there are actually not that many people in the world who are real experts Doing in this it well, wow. or as as many products as you might feel yeah. that do the job really really well um unreal engine is very good it does it out of the box quite well um unity has had some stuff then they got rid of it and they're bringing in some new stuff there's simple products out there like photon and all the rest of it but there are a range of things out there yeah. unless you want to write net code from the ground up and there's we, we won't be doing that but um essentially you have a couple of models really you have peer-to-peer -peer, which is when every client device and by client device i mean your xbox your playstation your pc mm. the device that you're playing on that's called the client and peer-to-peer -peer is when every client sits in a ring and they are all mutually responsible for the netcode mm. so for example they are sending out a message to everybody else in this game this is where i am and they are receiving all the messages from every other player oh, about where they are okay. so that's peer-to-peer um, which a lot of netcode used to happen like that in the old days. Yeah. The trouble with that is it's incredibly complicated. There's network traffic flying all over the place. You're reliant again on the individual person's machine, its power of it, right. internet connection and so on. Um, but then you have client server, which means there is all the clients, as I said, the Xboxes, Playstations, PCs and so on. But then there is one server, there is one device mm. which is responsible for being the host. That, right. that host is now in charge. Right. That changes the way network traffic flows around radically. Um, but uh, some older games and some still today, that host would still be mm -hmm. one of the clients. So if you played Call of oh, Duty back in yeah. the day, which you would have, yeah. you'd have gone uh, refinding host because the host has just rage quit. <laughs> so he was... That, that he or she was that dominant yeah. server yeah. in that mix that was responsible for hosting the game. But it was still in their house, on their Xbox or PlayStation, yeah. dependent on consumer-grade internet connection. Yeah. And you were all waiting to hope he doesn't rage quit and so on and so forth. And, um, and there were loads of flaws with that as well mm. because you would get host advantage. Like if you were the, if you were the host, you actually had some milliseconds of advantage. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Loads of cheating would take place because yeah. people would like put all sorts of devices and hacks in to give them an advantage. So that that was a bit flawed as well. But that same model, client server model, the better version of it is when the server doesn't belong to the the players. Right. It belongs to the developer, and we put it in the cloud in some infrastructure in a data center, and the machine is you know it's in safer hands. Yeah, it's yeah. in safer hands. It's commercial grade. Anyway, that's how multiplayer works effectively so that dedicated authoritative you can't hack it it belongs to us you know mm -hmm. 
server is the model that nearly all serious multiplayer games use these days. The trouble is, along comes the metaverse, and all of a sudden it's like, well, we want thousands of people in a persistent world all day long. And you instant, that, that's very different to a 5v5, 4v4 yeah. session-based game, right? Yeah. Um, and people have been trying to solve this problem forever. And in fact, it's an incredibly complicated mathematical and infrastructure problem to solve. Incredibly complicated. In fact, there are only a few companies in the world that are even coming close to attempting to solve it really, really well. Wow, really? Really well, yeah. And um, <clears throat> so two things, really. One, so if anybody follows uh, Yuga Labs and what they're doing with Improbable, so Yuga Labs, obviously the Board Ape Yacht Club folks, um, they're building the other side. The technology they're using is from Improbable in the UK, uh, and they are one of a cohort of people who have set out for many years now, actually, to try and solve that problem, and they're doing a pretty good job of it. Um, and you, if you follow them, you'll see their demos are getting thousands of people in and so on and so forth. There are about two or three other companies of various sizing that are also trying to solve that problem as well. Mm. Um, so obviously we've had conversations with Improbable, but we're in... Uh, sort of deeper conversations with about another two or three at the moment about what's right for Pavia. Yes. Um, but make no mistake, all of this is very cutting edge technology. Mm. And I'll be totally honest with you, uh, there are some people that saying, even on the Yuga Lab stuff, you probably don't need that many players in a certain, uh, in the same space at yeah. the same time. Yeah. And um, improbable by their own admission by the way because they really focused on games in the early days before the metaverse came along as a concept by their own admission they will say um actually didn't having that many players doesn't on the whole make games more fun not games video games mm. but it does present like great scaling for metaverse type technology so it depends what trying to problem you solve but i mean i still partially sit on the fence of um Actually, as long as you can get a certain amount of people together and a certain community of like-minded people together yeah. in the same place, yeah. it doesn't necessarily have to be a hundred thousands of people. Right. It really it just solves a technical scaling problem in many yeah. ways. So um, we are currently using traditional netcode. So anybody who played the live event, um, that was traditional netcode on an open source tech stack called Mirror, which was been developed by the community. It used to belong to Unity. It was called Unit back then. Now it's Mirror. That's the tech stack we're using for that. Um, we can get anywhere between two to maybe 400 players simultaneously on a server. Wow. But um, we have internally some ideas about how actually that, that might work okay, yeah. um, depending on how we go about it. In fact, it might even be better. It's weird. When you start to look about the dynamic of how people interact, Fortnite, 50, what was it, 15 million people in a Travis Scott concert? Yeah. There wasn't 15 million people in a session. There was definitely 15 million people watching so the Travis yeah. Scott thing. But that was made up of hundreds of thousands of individual game server sessions with a maximum of 60 players. Right. That's how that worked. Right. So it didn't have that many people in the same session at the same time. Yeah. Because it's incredibly hard to do. So um, the summary is multiplayer is working just great and we're proving it all the time on traditional netcode stack. But we are in discussions and exploration about some of the newer metaverse technology, which may enable us to do a lot more. Wow. Seems like a pretty simple problem to me, but you know, what do I know? <laughs> Lastly on my list, love them, hate them. They're everywhere. Pavs. Talk to me. <laughs> yeah, talk to me about Pavs. We teased a Mech Pav trailer yeah. that looked super cool. Yeah. What's going on? Pavs. Yeah. Well, Mech Pavs. This is fun. So the Mech pa the, the Pavs are out there, as you know, and we've always given them away. We give them away for free, and I know they trade away on the secondary markets, but they're these fun little creatures. And we got, we're got we doing some work to um, put all their various traits and rarities and stuff on the website soon. Um, but the Pavs are out there, but some of them are Mech compatible. And mm. ooh, what does that mean? And then, of course, I think it was last week or the week before, we teased uh, a little video. Did. Um, and this is, you know, a concept Mech suit at this stage of the game, but it's effectively... Hopefully implying that, ah, okay, mech suit for PAV. Um, but what we can say is what we're working on is we're really excited about this, actually. The mech suits for PAVs, there will be a range of them, but they will be composable. So they will be made up of individual elements. Ooh. Okay. So you will have legs, you will have left arm, you'll have right arm, you'll have torso, you'll have uh, power pack, um, but all of these individual items yeah. will have will come from different classes of mech suit. Wow! And but they will be interchangeable and composable 
within the game um, and on the same rig, effectively. So lots of amazing variations. Loads of variations. And then there is likely to be rarity and there will definitely be different classes and there may be different colors. And the name of the game is really, you know, match them up to something that you, the aesthetic yeah. that you really love. Yeah. Or you might go all in if you're a hardcore, you know, collector and go, no, nah, I've got to get that particular class with all the matching parts and bring it together wow. and flex that like crazy. And then the whole thing will only ever come to life when you get your mech compatible PAV and put him in the suit and then boom. So off. you can have your PAV, you can have a mech PAV for your PAV to sit in mm -hmm. and I assume there's a little bit more utility later to, yep. to be announced to come as well. Yeah, so yeah. stay tuned for that. Each one of those parts, component parts will be an NFT in its own right. Wow. Yep. So it's not just a case of you get it and it's just one and done. You can have a whole host of different arms and legs to go yep. together or you exactly. can collect the whole, wow. Yeah, so it's going to be wow. super, super fun for people trying to build the ultimate mech pav that they want uh, and put it all together. Yes. And it's going to be, there's some really interesting, lovely technical challenges, which I won't go into now, um, but how all this is going to work. But I, I love the idea of it's not just I've I've bought an NFT and that's my NFT. It's no, actually I've got to put all this stuff together yeah. to create like what you personally feel is like your unique ultimate mech pav suit with your cho choice of which pav you decide. Wow to put in it so that's super fun um so there will be a a mint so they'll be available to purchase um there will be i'm sure the community are going to have a thousand questions but suffice to say we will be updating you with the mint process and the dates and how it's going to work over the course of the next quarter Amazing. and we'll keep feeding you some information um about how you can really really get excited about what these things look like and what they can do that's super yep. lots of pav stuff been released recently lots more to come and like like paul said there'll be more information leading up to the mint so stay tuned um thank you guys so much for watching another dev update we appreciate you if you haven't already please subscribe and like the video see you next time